SBC Media. Welcome to iGaming Daily, analysing the news from the betting and gaming industry all over the globe. Supported by SBC Summit Barcelona, the industry-leading conference bringing you the future of sports betting and iGaming. SBC Summit Barcelona is the fastest growing sports betting and iGaming event in the industry, happening on the 19th to the 21st of September. Experience the entire global industry coverage under one roof with 15,000 delegates, over 350 exhibitors and so much more. Get your tickets now at svcevents.com. With SBC Summit Barcelona fast approaching, iGaming Daily continues to look deeper into the conference's agenda. And today we'll be turning our attention to the future of casino and iGaming track with our focus set on the world of aggregators. Joining me to take a deeper look into the panel session, titled Our Aggregators Reaching Market Saturation, is Irina Sazanova, the head of account management casino at Every Matrix, who will also be participating on the debate alongside Nile Thomas, the CEO at Spindet, Alexander Tomic, the founder and CEO of Lear, and Nicola Longmere, the CEO of Avatar UX. But first off, Irina, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm doing great today. And really excited and was looking forward to our discussion. Same, same as well. I think aggregator topics, certainly at these events and just in general, really engage the audience. Um, I, I, they always see quite a large turn up. Uh, how do you pronounce it? Uh, a large turnover in, not a large turnover, that's um, something else. You see a strong attendance at these events when it's something to do with aggregators. And... On that, can you just tell us or explain a little bit about the panel session that you'll be participating on um, at the conference? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a really hot topic. And uh, indeed, um, there's a lot of uh, focus now on aggregation side of the business. So I'm really looking forward to have this discussion uh, about our aggregators reaching the market situation. As overall, uh, currently our gaming market is saturated. It's very saturated itself. And in the recent years, we just witnessed uh, how this uh, th- this is changing. And uh, of course, aggregators play a huge role in supplying multiple markets with numerous game titles, different size of studios, just via one API uh, to a very wide range of operators. And um, I'm really looking forward to having this discussion and to know more about different angles from other panelists bringing their own expertise. And uh, on the paddle itself, uh, I would say Matrix is the only large full service provider and the content aggregator partner with many startup, medium and large studios and vendors to help grow their business and bring our 15 years worth experience and knowledge to this important industry topic. So I think it will be exciting one. Perfect. It will be exciting. And I think it's quite interesting to see how we actually got to the point of this next question being asked and the whole point of the debate itself is and i'll ask this quite simply to you are we actually reaching market saturation in the online casino aggregation space and again just how have we actually got to the point of this question being asked well very simple i would say yes we are how we got to the point industry itself becoming very saturated and fast-paced not only in the aggregation space However, impact of aggregation is massive. It is the preferred route for many top tier operators and not only for top tier, but of course for for getting multiple studios in various jurisdictions. It's also fastest route for many studios in reaching their content distribution ways faster. So there are many benefits of using aggregation. And of course, this tendency is being pushed massively from operator side. And of course, for operator themselves, it's being pushed massively on from the player side. Okay. Nicely put, simple yes. Just for the listeners out there, that isn't going to be the panel dis- panel discussion. It's not just going to be, yes, we are. Thank you for coming. We'll go into, you'll obviously go deeper into it. And I just want to ask you, actually, because the market is becoming saturated. Um, you not just said it's not just aggregators. It's pretty much the online casino space in general. We've seen that in many different um, verticals of this space. But how do aggregators aim to kind of stay ahead of the curve to kind of just just to remain appealing to operators yeah well uh 
as as I already told, uh, the the aggregators is the fastest and easy route to many markets. Um, but uh, that it's not that much, uh, you know, like the old classic aggregation model is becoming um, more competitive. And I would say that there is much more to aggregation than simply aggregating the content. It should be unified experience and offering, providing also legal compliance product and uh, other type of consultancy and data-driven insights into what is working and what isn't working and where best to optimize. Plus, of course, it's flexibility across various content and gamification functionality and additional innovation features that enhance revenue or create new revenue streams and boost acquisition and retention. Perfect. And as we know, like in recent times, aggregation it's experienced a massive surge and with such it's there's more influence as plays demand more choices um why in your opinion what is this trend uh, down to what's changed in recent years and what is the impact this has kind of on aggregators now and maybe moving forward in the not so near future well uh First of all, I would say if we are looking also on the recent years, and depends on how recent years we will be looking, uh, it's of course the use of mobiles. Uh, mobile is significantly increased in the in the last uh, 10, even 15 years. But anyways, uh, the, the same as technology progress. It makes all of us surf internet for things of our interest almost any time we have a free minute. So online gaming is not an exception. And secondly, industry covers that hunger for more various content for players. It becomes easier to develop innovative new games than years ago. There was a boom of rising stars with creative new ideas that was very positively met by players, which I do not think is bad, as this is the entertainment industry and innovating ways how to keep your audience entertained is what we are all here for. And as a result, when you have growing demand, you grow your offering as well. And to keep the pace, you need someone fast and scalable to supply both sides. Well, this is where Aggregator comes in. Let's kind of turn our attention to one vertical of the online casino space, and that's that's the slot sector. Now, again, this is going to be quite a vague question. It would be quite blunt, but I think it might be important to kind of determine aggregation and its importance towards the future. So simply put again, can, can studios achieve success with a launch of their slot title without the support of an aggregator? Very simple. Yes, of course. Uh, I always give some room for possibilities and uh, there are many factors that would lead, uh, would, would lead to success of the slot. And aggregators just allow rising star studios and their innovations to prol- proliferate in the market using their established networks that uh, where they can basically spread content far and wide. That doesn't mean that studios do not need to market and push their content. And of course, success of the slot launch depends not from the aggregator, but on the slot itself and how it will be welcomed by the players. So aggregator would just increase chances of success by increasing the distribution and will help it to reach wider audience. Yeah, I think I, I always ask simple questions. And do you know what? Sometimes there is no simple answer or simple question. Uh, but I think you answered it really well. Okay, so we've already mentioned about oversaturation in the online casino space in different areas, like we said, with live casino or slots titles. Um And we've already mentioned aggregation and aggregators are going down a similar path. Um, But how do you kind of prioritize quantity over quality? Because yet again, we've seen some slot studios in particular release a lot of slot titles where the quality isn't really there. But then we've seen some studios who are releasing little doses each quarter and the quality of the slot is tremendous, but sometimes it doesn't relay that in its success so how do you prioritize quantity over quality while still retaining success well um it's it's really interesting question um of course uh, there are a lot of uh, studios and a lot of slot games in the market now and uh, it's been quite hot topic 
uh, of course, how to to to, to prioritize uh, quantity over quality. But I would say that also in the recent year or two, I do see very changing approach on the operator side that, of course, impacts aggregation as well. So for the operators, they just cannot maintain hundreds of weekly game releases and they limit amount of new games by setting several weeks to send out roadmaps with demo links that allows them to choose quality over quantity and tailor content offering to their player profiles in different markets. And uh, of course, this really affects aggregators. We have a lot of studios, we have a lot of vendors, but when we are offering everything to them, they would become more picky. And uh, it's it's really important not only to provide the offering and hundreds of games technically now, but become more agile in suggesting the content. And this is something that aggregators are trying to, to bring this knowledge and to also help to mitigate the risk to, to make sure that quality is still there. And no matter how many games you bring to the market, you're just picking the gems that are more proper to your audience, to your players, to, to, to the market itself. Mm -hmm. I kind of just taking a few steps back. So we talked about um, the success of slot titles and slot launches using aggregators, if there's any impact on this. I think one of the benefits of an increased market saturation of uh, aggregators is that actually we've seen more and more kind of look at smaller studios and work with them more. And I think this is kind of a good thing moving forward because in my eyes, these smaller studios are the pathways to innovation. Um, that's my opinion on that one. I think they have more scope to innovate more because they're a bit more creative, a bit more free. And with working with smaller studios to kind of, well, working aggregators working with smaller studios, is there, is this a good way for more people within the industry to kind of get their eyeballs on this product because you're exposing them with major operators and how can smaller studios best utilize this opportunity? You know, this is something I really love about aggregation and uh, I've always been on the B2B side, but uh, aggregation is definitely the one of, uh, of the fields that I enjoy the most is exactly because you work with so many studios and uh, small studios are, are really fun to work with. So they just might pop up with just an idea, a single product, a new way of dealing with a slot or a card game or any other type of eye gaming product. Uh, of course, alone, a small studio will struggle to bring this idea to, to market, even if they draw the attention of some bigger operators, uh, but really will there be a direct integration route. So here where aggregation partner can help them to, to utilize aggregator in its best way. Uh, of course, they're very different things to consider so and I, I would say that the most important is just choosing the aggregator they tend to cooperate with and uh, maybe we'll just move a little bit on, on the other side of, of your questions but I think it's, it's quite important to, to, to bring um, some attention to, to choosing aggregation partner and areas of attention uh, so basically I would say it's scalability and technical capacity the ability to write quickly and effectively, when regulated, regulatory changes occur alongside growing technical demands. And of course, market that aggregator covers, uh, which might be the paramount for future growth, uh, usual flow of cooperation with, with uh, operators, how exactly the aggregator informs about the new content, promotions, individual cooperation, etc. then availability of own gamification tools to operators and uh, the, then, of course, the last but not the least, uh, variety of commercial models. Uh, would you leave your content at the mercy of aggregation negotiation, or will you be able to interact with operators integrated with this aggregator on your own? Um, because I believe that no one else than a city itself knows how to market their games. And I think keeping in mind all these areas, uh, it will really help small studios to utilize opportunity working via aggregator in the future. Mm -hmm. I, I, for one, am looking forward to how both aggregators and smaller studios combine and collaborate moving forward. I think it's going to be one of the most interesting spaces to watch probably in the next 12 months or so. Um, but one thing I do want to kind of ask you on, 
again, we've already, we've already mentioned kind of the, the sheer volume um, when it comes to aggregators in the space and also the content development uh, from studios itself. A lot of studios are producing a lot more content. So how has that rise kind of impacted aggregation over the past few years? Oh, it's, uh, it's gotten more expensive to, to manage an increasing number of direct integration integrations uh, with operators having to divide their existing resources between maintaining existing integrations and launching new ones. Uh, aggregators have more or less solved that problem. They take on this technical and operational burden, uh, burden and thus allow operators more freedom in uh, the content they can choose. Uh, so it's basically transformed the problem from a resource and technical one to, to simply commercial one. One thing we've noticed in in the online space, certainly in recent years, and I always like to call this the um, the Disney approach. So for the listeners who aren't aware, like Disney bought out a lot of other companies to build this massive empire. They're always a big empire anyway in the media world. But they bought out more and more studios to create a bigger portfolio. We're seeing a lot more acquisition and mergers within the iGaming industry where we create where these smaller studios are getting picked up and these behemoths are being made, so, so to say. Um, and it's been a common place across the industry. Um, is, from an aggregation space, is call it, uh, consolidation something we can expect maybe moving forward with aggregators? Well, you know, never say never. <laughs> so, of course, I would say it's possible, yes. But uh, I, I would say that also the current trend in the market that I see is, that, uh, of, of course, it's leading to acquisition and it's often either the desire to expand uh, business into new verticals or accelerating an entrance into one or more new markets. But often aggregation business forms part of a wider group now. And we have seen some activity with the likes of IGT and Neo Games acquiring aggregation business units. So I, I would say that, yes, it's, it's acquisition is commonplace now uh, in the industry that's for sure but uh, consolidation would never come alone in the aggregation space only so there will be something something else <laughs> i would say a few more questions before we just round up and one of the topics that i wanted to talk to you about arena is localization and just for aggregators how you kind of tailor your offerings to a variety of different global audiences and markets because for me and throughout the sector localization has been quite a big keyword and kind of kind of a big phrase moving forward. And I think every company has localization at the forefront of their minds. And it's important because you can't kind of put Latin America in one big bubble. You need to break it down. You need to break it down into countries because each country is very different from one another. So how would an aggregator who's pushing, say, again, a slot title to different operators in different markets, how would you tailor your tailor approach differently? Oh, uh, it, it's really fun because, you know, when you're just asking and you're as an aggregator, you work with a lot of studios, you work with a lot of vendors, and uh, this is one of the most frequent questions I usually ask to, to my colleagues. So where the content is performing, and it's, uh, sometimes I, I will hear like Latin or Africa, or it's Asia focus. <laughs> so, so yeah, it, it, it becomes quite, quite painful for me to, to, to understand that localization is definitely very, very important for wider distribution. And uh, once again, I do believe that aggregator is just more than just bringing technology. It brings knowledge and uh, bringing knowledge of uh, localization and how you can uh, make benefit of having this and that slot game in certain market, not just Latin. Um, aggregator has huge advantage in terms of having a volume of data that allows us to recommend the vendors and game types based on their overall traffic in specific markets. We can thus ensure that our operators have access to the best performing vendors for each market, uh, but also at the same time, they are free to experiment with other content in a bit to differentiate themselves from other offerings. We have all this data in our back office and we do try to, to give more uh, visibility and transparency what actually works but of course, it's up to the operator to, to, to either believe it or, or not. Mm -hmm. 
And just two more questions, and we're going to circle back to SBC Summit Barcelona because that's how we started this conversation. This is how we got into the topic today. And I'm, I'm kind of really happy that we've kind of focused more on aggregate, aggregation as a whole. And we, in the short time, I think we've kind of we've touched on quite a few different points, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, but just circling back to Barcelona, you are on the panel, um, like we mentioned in the introduction, for attendees and participants uh, who are coming to your session. What would you want for them to take away from the discussion? Well, uh, the the most important of that, I would like to say that there is much more to aggregation than simply content. Of course, the lines have become blurred in recent years as several B2C brands developing their own B2B arms and vice versa. But ultimately, what we aim to do is cut through this complexity and provide a unified service that many competitors simply don't do. And offering the largest selection of content available in the industry, complementary services that make it easy to launch a new market or grow existing territories um, and provide more and more complementary features uh, for, for the same gamification like bonus engine, jackpot engine, and uh, many, many more to come. And uh, again, significantly enhance the offering and increase uh, acquisition and retention, loyalty, and bring this new innovations to, to the market that create additional layers of excitement and new revenue streams that traditional aggregators cannot offer. Perfect. Yeah, we, I know, like I said, it's been 20 or so minutes and I feel like you could talk for hours and we still won't cover everything that aggregation is or does. Um, so it's really good. So for people listening, this isn't just aggregation. Like, go to the panel session, there will be a complete other discussion that you're hearing right now, which is a great thing. And the final one, this is your time to pitch Arena. You're on the panel session. Pitch to the listeners attending Barcelona. Why should they come? to your debate session? Well, aggregation is a key part of how the industry operates. Without it, we would not have diversity of content and innovative features, functionality, and the ability to rapidly launch a new market. But uh, there is much more to it than that. And find out why and discover the latest developments during the session. Perfect. And that's my final question. Um, what I'll say is, Arena. Thank you for joining me today. This has been a great dis discussion and I honestly wish we could go for a bit longer, but maybe do an hour podcast at some point on aggregation because I feel like we could delve into many interesting topics and it is the aggregation space is definitely one to watch in the probably the not so distant future and definitely the mid future and long. So keep an eye on that space for and for the listeners out there, I will leave a link in the description to the SBC events page so you can find out more about the SBC agenda and we'll also put any relevant links from SBC's roster of news sites that relate to affiliation. Uh, Arena, again, thank you for joining me and to our listeners out there, thank you and goodbye. Thank you for listening to today's episode of iGaming Daily, brought to you in conjunction with SBC Summit Barcelona, being held at the Fira Barcelona Montjuic on the 19th to the 21st of September. If you want to find out more about some of the subjects raised today, feel free to explore any of the sites in the SBC News Network or check out the latest edition of the SBC Leaders magazine. Happy reading.